What's up guys, this is Recon with Gaming Hookup, and I wanted to make this video to talk about NVIDIA SLI, which is Scalable Link Interface. This is a technology that allows you to put a second graphics card in your machine and get a lot better performance out of the games you play on PC than if you just had one card. Now on paper, that sounds amazing, right? You own a really good card, or maybe even a mid-range card, and you're getting good performance, but you want to be able to turn the settings to max. You want to be able to get better resolution, better frame rates out of the game. So you look into SLI and you realize, oh, I can just go get a second card, put it in my machine, connect it together, and I'm going to get double the performance. Well, the only thing that's stopping me is maybe my ability to pay for that second card. But once you make the plunge and you go and you buy that second card, you realize that NVIDIA's marketing was pretty deceptive. Now, what I mean by that is 90% of the games out there do not really make use of SLI and in some cases function worse than if you just didn't have that second card to begin with. So I didn't realize this either because when I was growing up in the early 90s, I could never afford to even get one high-end card, let alone two. And I always bought lower mid-range cards and my dream you know, really was to have a high-end card and I never even imagined that I could ever afford to have two high-end graphics cards when they first come out. Well, skip from the 90s all the way to 2016, I bought a GTX 1080, NVIDIA GTX 1080, and it was amazing. I popped in my machine. I, I was blown away of, of the difference between a high-end NVIDIA card and a mid-range. So I thought, you know what? I have the money. I'm going to go out there and buy a second GTX 1080. And it, it was a little hard to find because I bought the, ten, the first 1080 on day one, so it took about a week or two before I could find them back in stock and I got it through EVGA and I hooked it up. I bought the new NVIDIA high bandwidth bridge so it looks really nice in my setup and I was testing a bunch of the games that I own. I own a little over 1500 games on Steam and I started noticing a pattern that most of the games I'm trying actually run worse than I remember and I was doing a little digging, a little research into it and I discovered that the developers of most PC games are not developing it with SLI in mind. They're looking at their user base. They determine that, well, most of the people that are purchasing our game do not have two graphics cards in their machine, so we're not going to spend the resources necessary to optimize our game for hardware that most people don't have. So I didn't know this going in, and I felt really stupid after I bought that second card because it was like a $700 paperweight. Um, there are a few games that I can think of that will make use of SLI and will make you feel a little bit like your, your purchase was justified. One of them is the Tomb Raider 2013 reboot, not Rise of the Tomb Raider. I did not get very good performance with that, but the 2013 reboot of Tomb Raider, I got double the frames per second with both cards running SLI than I did with just one. And that made me feel a little bit better, but almost every other game runs worse with SLI enabled. Uh, one example of that is the new Doom game, the remake. Uh, well, it's not quite a remake, but the new Doom title, it for uh, several months went by where there was no patch for SLI. So when I would run the game, I'd have to go into the NVIDIA control panel and disable SLI and just run it off of one card. Otherwise, it was stuttering the entire time. And I think that that should be told in marketing to people that this is not something for the average user, but NVIDIA markets this to everybody that, oh no, SLI is the, it's the way to go if you can afford it. The only thing that's limiting you is how much you're willing to spend, but it's not really true. And I'm making this video as sort of a warning to people that thought, you know what, I really want to get SLI. It's something that you maybe set a goal for. And then when you finally do it, you just feel really stupid. And honestly, I, I feel pretty stupid buying a second card. I wish I had done more research, but again, I did do some amount of research and I noticed that half the people online said, oh, go SLI, go SLI. And the other half were saying it's snake oil. Don't buy into it. Uh, most games don't utilize it. So it's one of those situations where you really have to just go out there and do it or else listen to somebody that might have some sound advice for you. Because as of this point, I have two GTX 1080s connected together with the new HB bridge from NVIDIA. And most of the games just do not run properly. And I wish I had known this because I wish I had just maybe saved my money, not even bought the 1080 and waited till the 1080 Ti came out or buy the Titan instead. Um, 
but one game, the game you're looking at is Nvidia uh, is is Nvidia SLI ready. And even though many games claim to be SLI ready and they claim to be optimized for it, one thing you'll notice is either they're not optimized for it or their optimizations are barely noticeable. They're negligible, really. Um, this game, I did get about 30% in performance improvement having both cards in SLI. But this these games are few and far between. Most of the games you're going to be playing, it's just going to be a waste to have two cards. You're better off getting the best single card money can buy and staying away from any of these Frankenstein type technologies that NVIDIA comes out with like they did with the 690, which was basically two graphics cards and one, which was like a, a hybrid of SLI and single GPU technology. Um, stay away from that because those have their own issues and some of them are very similar to SLI. The best thing you could possibly do is buy the single best graphics card money can buy and continue buying the best cards as your current card can no longer run the games you want to play. Stay away from SLI in my opinion because it's just not worth the headache and it ad actually adds a layer of frustration to it even when things are running right. And What, do I, what I mean by that is every game needs to have an SLI profile to ensure that the game is running properly. So PCs already have a disadvantage when it comes to playing games in that it's not as straightforward as putting a disc in a PS4 and the game boots right away, maybe has to install because all the new consoles install the games to the hard drive. But other than that, uh, PCs have a disadvantage already when it comes to consoles in terms of the average person just popping a game in, just wants to play when they get home from work. And this adds another layer because not only do you need to install the game to the PC, you need to make sure that you're logged into any of the online services that come with the game. You need to install third-party software. And then right when you're about to boot the game, you got to go, oh yeah, I got to boot up the NVIDIA control panel and make sure that the profile settings are correct or else SLI is going to just make the game run horribly. And to me, that's, that's not sensible. There's no reason why we should be adding more complexity to PC gaming than it already has because it already has that disadvantage of not being able to just pop a game in and it just boots up. Now, obviously, for people that like to tinker with stuff, SLI may, might be good. It's a very expensive way to tinker with things, but again, the option is there. And uh, one other thing I want to talk about was DirectX 12, which is Microsoft basically trying to, quote, save the PC gaming industry. Well, I, I believe Steam already did that, but with DirectX 12, one of the things they talk about is multi-GPU. Now, if you go out and build a new Intel Core i7 machine, you probably have onboard graphics on the processor. If you're a PC gamer, you're less likely to use that onboard graphics because it doesn't run very good. But being able to use your discrete graphics card, like your new 1070 or 1080, with the onboard GPU and somehow they work together and they make the performance better, that makes sense. Um, and that's something that Microsoft is really trying to do with DirectX 12. But again, very few games are going to make use of this. And one of them is Rise of the Tomb Raider. However, I tried running my onboard GPU with my discrete GPU, and I didn't notice any performance improvements. And when I turned on SLI, I noticed that the game ran worse. And with DirectX 12, you cannot have overlays at this point in time. Any kind of overlays like uh, Precision X, which runs, it's an overclocking software you can run um, to overclock NVIDIA cards. That has an on-screen display, which shows you your frame rate and uh, any other information you want displayed on the screen. With DirectX 12, you can't currently run that without the DirectX game crashing, DirectX 12 game crashing. So there's a lot of frustrations to get around when it comes to running multiple GPUs. I just don't think the technology is there yet. I think give it maybe three, four years let NVIDIA hash out these issues. But even if you do that, there's, there's some question of whether NVIDIA is just abandoning the multi-GPU technology in general because there was a point in time a few years ago when uh, the top YouTubers were buying three or four Titan graphics cards, which are $1,000 each. They're buying three or four and showing them off in their case and saying, look at this, I got four Titans in my computer. Isn't this amazing? Look at the performance I'm getting. But NVIDIA actually came out around the time of the 1080 launch last year and said, we're no longer supporting three and four way SLI because of scaling issues. Now, with the billions of dollars that NVIDIA invests into uh, research and development, why couldn't they take that money and 
try to resolve this multi-GPU, the, these issues that are present with it? Well, one of the reasons why I think they don't do that is because, again, most people are not purchasing more than one graphics card. And I think if it was the other way around and most people had two graphics cards and very few people had one, you'd see every single PC game being optimized for two cards or more. But that's not likely to happen given the nature of PC gaming. And it's just really frustrating um, for being an early adopter. It's frustrating to be uh, someone who thinks, hey, I can go out there and get all this performance if I buy a second card. And then you realize, oh, wait, it's only one or two of my games can even make use of this. It ends up making you feel really stupid. And I guess that's why I wanted to make this video is I'm hoping that somebody will listen to this and say, you know what? I'm not going to buy that second graphics card. I'm just going to save up my money and get the single best card I can get. You're better off doing that until technology changes, until NVIDIA realizes that multi-GPU is important, which at this point in time, I don't know if they're going to do that. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe and let me know in the comments below if you have anything you want to say. Thanks.